Hello, this is an introduction on how to use Scape tools for Genially. First of all, if you don't know what Genially is, Genially is a free website where you can make lots and lots of online presentations and they have lots of great templates. So for example, here for gamification, they've got lots of different games and quizzes that you can use. Um, you can also make presentations and you can make them from scratch if you want to. The great thing about this is that they can be interactive because um, the users can move things around and um, you can add interactive buttons so you can add games and so on. So it is especially good for teachers who want to make interactive activities for remote learning, for example. And it's also a great tool to make digital escape rooms and that, that's what I'm especially interested in. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to use Scape tools. So Scape is a group that's independent of Genially. It's run by a group of teachers from France and they are absolute geniuses with coding and they have made lots and lots of extensions that you can add to Genially to add more games and activities and more interactivity really. So they have really extended the range of things you can do with Genially. So they're not part of Genially. So you need to download all these extensions separately. And I'll show you in a minute uh, how to do that. Um, part of our presentation of tools are also made by uh, Sandbox Education, which is basically the Spanish version of Escape. So this is a group of Spanish teachers who have also made a few extensions um, based on the Escape ones and they've uh, just developed them a bit further and made more games. So first of all, I'm going to show you a few examples of what you can do with Escape tools and then I'll show you how to use them. So let's go over to the example presentation here. So for example, this one is D&D, so a match-up activity where you have to match up the words to the colors and as you can see for each one you get some individual feedback um, you can also make a password check for example in the preview it shows question one but it will disappear in proper presentation mode so for example in this case my username is escape and my password is one two three and when I check it I then get into this website so to speak um, or you can make other fun things. So there's hangman, there are puzzles like this one, nice little jigsaw puzzle, and all of them give you some kind of feedback. So in this case, this little man here. And also it means you can then go to the next slide only if you solve this puzzle, because uh, you can turn these automatic arrows off and on. So uh, players would have to do this slide before they get to the next one. Okay, so first of all, what you will need to use any of the scape tools is you need to download the presentation. So you find a link to that in the description below. So when you open it up, you will get to our presentation. So this presentation has been made by me and by Marie Alero. Uh, we are two language teachers and we're also genially ambassadors. And we've just translated the scape tools from French and from Spanish choose the extension that you want. If you hover over them, it will give you a short description of what you can do with them. And then if you click on the star, you get the individual presentations. So for example, here, let's go with this one. If I click on it, it shows you the quiz presentation. It also has a little video. So most of the extensions have their own videos on how to use them. But in this video, I'm just going to show you some uh, general principles. So down here, you can see reuse this Genially. So to do that, you need to have a Genially account. But as I said, it is free and everything that we show in our uh, Scape presentation, you can use with a free account. So now I've copied this presentation to my own uh, slides, so to speak. So now I've got a copy of it. Okay, so here's my presentation. So here's a little game that I want to make and I want to make a match up game with this. So what I need to find is the template for D&D, &D, which is the drag and drop activity. So I go up here to add page, then go to my creations and then it would show me any presentations that I've ever created or 
that I have reused from somewhere else. So make sure that you have reused the right extension. So in this case, uh, I need D and D. So I type it in the top there. Or if you've recently downloaded it, then it should be one of the top ones that you can see there. So I want D and D. And then what you always need is the blue slide. So in this case here, we've got this blue slide. These are the templates. So this is what you need to add to your presentation. In some of the extensions, the template also has the instructions on it. But in this case, because there's so many elements to it, the instructions are on a different slide. So it might be worth downloading the instructions as well. Just add them to your presentation so you can quickly look how to do the activity. OK, so here are the explanations. Here are all my elements. So this looks a bit daunting at first. But if you read the instructions and watch the videos, it should be pretty straightforward. Really important is that most of the extensions will have the function button. So that is normally bright yellow or a light yellow. Sometimes it's also black. So this is really what is making the game work in the background. So it's really important that you have it somewhere on your page. They will always be invisible and you don't need to do anything with them. Just stick them on your page. And then depending on which of the games you're using, you need some other elements. So in this case, I want the matchup items. And because I've got four pictures, I need four boxes there. And most of the scape extensions simply work by grouping these code boxes with pictures or words that you are using. So it's really easy. So what I need to do is find the two that match together and just put it on top. Just keep in mind, all these elements will always be invisible once you view your presentation. And then they normally work with grouping. So I just need to draw a box while I'm holding down my left uh, mouse button and then use the group button at the top. Or I can click on one item, hold down control and click on the other item. And then that also selects both and I can group them together. OK, so now I've grouped them all. In this case, I also want to be able to move some of the pictures around. So the bottom ones I want to be able to move. So I select them and up here I use the little hand item that makes them draggable by the player. So if I go into the preview mode now, you can see I can move things around, match them up. And also all these code elements are invisible, which is what we want. It's not quite finished because normally you also need to group something with the uh, correct button and incorrect button to show if the player has solved the task or not. Some of the scape extensions have a verification button or a check button. These check buttons can't, you can't change them very much. So sometimes you can change the color of them. You can change the writing on some of them, but not all of them. So if you want your check button to look different to what you've got here, then you can do that. And let's say instead of this check button, I just want this box here. So what you would do is make sure that the check button is in the foreground. So go to the layer element here, put it at the top. So it's in to on top of the little case there. And now I don't want to be able to see this, but it still needs to be there so people can click on it. So I just go to transparency up there and turn the transparency right down. And now it's invisible, but the players don't know it's even there. So they will click on this case, but actually they're clicking on the verification button. So that's one way of making your own buttons, changing the layout and the writing on them and so on. OK, some of the scape extensions will have elements that can be duplicated. So for this one, really, I just want one to one matchup. But sometimes you can have several elements. So for example, here is the template for hangman. And I want to have uh, five wolves because every time the player gets something wrong, I want one of the wolves to eat one of my sheep. So I can just copy and paste a few of my wolves and I go to the template for hangman and 
here's the little i um the little element i need so as you can see they're not always in boxes sometimes it's just writing and i put it over here and if i put it up here you can see that this now says an x there and if i duplicate it it gives me an x but if i go out of the slide and back in again it sorts out the numbering so now i've got number one and number two and this is important because that tells me that number one needs to be grouped with the first wolf and number two needs to be grouped with the second wolf if i want them to appear in the right order but if i group these items it will change the numbering again so if i group item two first so let's group this and group the other item second let's group this so now you can see they gone back to x so if i go out and back in again now this one says one and this one says two so every time you duplicate these items or you group them or ungroup them it changes the order of them so make sure that if the code you're using has a number in it that turns to an x when you do something with it then you always need to go out to a different slide come back in again and then it will show you the number that it has at the moment so if i wanted to change the order then i would need to ungroup these wolves and make sure i group them in the right order okay then at first when you're using these escape tools you might sometimes get some problems so i'm going to show you the two most common problems so here's my troubleshoot number one and when i go into preview mode nothing appears i can't see anything the, the page is just blank and even this um, brush down here which isn't even part of the game is completely invisible so that happens because you haven't grouped everything so if you've got code elements that are not grouped then it will just be blank so once i group my items again it should then work so group them all group there you go okay so now my grouping is correct so now my game will work again another problem that might happen is here you go into preview and you can still see all the codes which obviously we don't want and it will also not properly work the reason here is that i've forgotten to put the code element in which is this little yellow box so don't forget the yellow box you don't need to group it or do anything with it but it does need to be in your page otherwise it won't work so make sure it's there and then when i go in now all my elements will be invisible the third one is that in some of the extensions like i showed over here some elements might still be visible so for example if i go into preview mode i can still see q1 and q2 which i don't really want but this is only in preview mode so if i go into proper view mode for this presentation the q1 wouldn't be there anymore so just read the instructions carefully it will always tell you if items are still visible in preview mode so don't get confused that you can still see the button or you can still see a word that shouldn't be there just go into proper um, presentation mode and they will disappear